You're tuned to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is a program called The Wonderful World of Wardini Books. And it's our pleasure, as always, to have in the hot seat Lou from Wardini Books in Havelock North. How are you going, Lou? Really well. Thank you, Ken. You Yourself? had a good week. Oh, yeah, I'm a box of birds. Well, you will be after your holiday. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> went to old Hawaii. Hawaii. Almost went for a surfing lesson, but for 135 bucks, I thought, mm, nah. Oh, it would have been worth it, wouldn't it? Oh, it would have been worth it, but I had a lilo. Oh, yeah. I was lying on me lilo. Yeah, that's all right. That's for free. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> now you've got four more great books, and we're going to start one with one called Toy Toy. What's that all about? Yeah, I mean, look how fabulous great, that cover it? Is. it is. So this is a journal for young writers and artists, and I'm hoping it's going to tell me, how old would you think the person that painted that would be? Oh, I would think they'd probably have to be 14 or 15. Yeah, and that's the good thing about this, because that was painted by Jack Boost, who is 10. Ooh, wow. So what this Clever. does, it's a New Zealand journal, mm. so it comes out quite regularly, and it's, I'm reading from the back, it celebrates the ideas, imaginations, and creative spirit of New Zealand's young writers and artists. So they take submissions from children and publish them. And if I was still teaching, I would be using this as an exemplar, you know, to give mm. to a child, I've taught intermediate for the past several years, and saying, well, you're 11, an 11 year old wrote this yes what do you think you know it can yes. happen and there is the the quality of the writing is just incredible um i'm trying to find a short one to to read you there's all sorts of it so there's poetry there's stories there's little bits of all sorts of different kinds of writing um now of course i can't find a short one there's one all right there's a poem here called wind roaring howling tugging i run tripping as i go she flies whistling as she zooms after me she makes the trees bow and take off their clothes red green and yellow lie on the ground chatting when forced to run the wind tracks me down like a fox wow and that was written by an 11 year old no Seven. Oh my god. That was Millie Hood, aged seven. True. Yeah. So that's, that's hard to believe, isn't it? Really cool. So I've, I thought I'd flag this because they're coming up for another sub submission. So they're accepting submissions for the 13th issue of Toy Toy. If you're a young New Zealand writer or artist and you are five years to 13 years, they would love to hear from you. And they welcome submissions in English and Te Reo Māori. So you contact editor at toytoy.nz. So if anybody wants further information on that, mm. they can always ring me at the shop because I yep. just think that's such a valuable piece of work. What's your number at the shop? Uh, at Havelock North, it's 877-7783. What about the Napier store? If I'm in Napier, which I am Sundays and Mondays, that's 6512632. Hard to believe that a seven-year-old wrote that. I mean, there are some very clever little yep. ones out there, aren't there? Absolutely brilliant. And the next mm. one is called Orphan Monster Spy. Yeah, this is a young adult novel. It's by Matt Killeen. And it is set due in the run-up and during the first part of the Second, year, Second World War. And it deals with a young Jewish girl called Sarah. And she's 15 and she's living with her mother. And they are outrunning the Nazis. So they've been moved around and mm. moved around. And they used to have quite... Her mother was an actress and they've had quite a nice life. Um, dad's abandoned them because they're Jews and just left mm. them to it. Um, and they are going through a roadblock to try and get somewhere. I think they're going to Austria or something. Can't quite remember all the details now. But the mother, who's an alcoholic, panics and she crashes the roadblock. And she gets shot. She's killed mm. in the first page, probably. Mm, no. And then Sarah has this split second to think, what do I do? What do I do? And she just gets out and she runs. And then it's really about what happens to her after that. So that's the orphan part. Mm. And then she... Lots of twists and turns along the way. And she is... Befriended isn't quite the right word. She forms some kind of a relationship with this chap who is working for the Allies. And he puts her, Jewish German girl into a school for Nazi children mm. as a spy because she's really skinny, she's malnourished, she looks about 12 and she's Aryan, she's blonde and blue blonde hair, blue eyed. And so she passes for a German girl mm. who is very strong on the Third Reich. And she is trying to befriend a um, the daughter of a scientist who's developing a bomb. So it's just, that's the spy mm -hmm. bit. And the monster bit is that she just feels hideous <laughs> because she feels <laughs> yes. that she's, you know, betraying it. And she's in danger all the time. So it just reads like this. It's it reads like a grown up thriller. It's it's full of tension. Sounds like it would make a good movie or a TV series. Mm, yeah, absolutely. She's a wonderful character. Mm. You're listening mm. to Radio Kidnappers, the voice of Hawke's Bay. This is the wonderful world of Wardini books. Lou is here as she is every week reviewing four new books. Just to remind our listeners, Lou, we want to come and see you. Where are you? 
Jewish stores. We're 16 Tomato Road in Havelock North and 44 Hastings Street, Napier. And the next book we want to look at is uh, one called Strange Practice. Strange Practice. This is a Dr. Dr. Greta Helsing novel. And I just absolutely loved it. So this is a bit of a left field one, a bit out of the box. So Greta Helsing is a... Um, She's a Harley Street doctor, but she specialises. Um, she treats London's undead. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got vampires yes. and ghouls and mummies and all sorts of things that all can't get, supernatural creatures that can't get care anywhere else. And they have very specific problems, as you can imagine, <laughs> Ken. So Greta Helsing is the um, MD for the dead, uh, the GP for the dead. And... Um, in this book, which is the first in what is going to be a series, she um, is called to a very distressed vampire who has turned up on the doorstep of one of her friends, who is also a vampire. So this one's kind of a lunar vampire. Mm. He sort of changes during the, um, the the lunar cycle. And something is hunting them down. And right. she then gets involved in this investigation. And it was just brilliant. So silver, silver bullets and all that sort of stuff. All that kind of thing. Yeah. And Excellent. quite funny in parts as well. Yeah. yeah. Now, the next book is a, a tippy toppy book. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like you mentioned before we came to it, very relevant because it's called Made in North Korea. Yeah. Tell us about that. And it's just a gorgeous looking book, isn't it? it? Is. You know, it's beautiful pink and red. It looks um, Korean. It does look Korean. Yeah, it does. That's it. And the author of this, Nicholas Bonner, um, he was actually a... He's sort of a travel agent for North Korea, mm. which, you know, people don't get in, in and out there very much. But I think in the 80s he had a bar in Beijing or something. And he and a friend used to nip over... Um, into North Korea and he said he just became absolutely obsessed and fascinated by the place and so what he's done is he's kind of smuggled things out of North Korea and collected things over his travels um, that he probably shouldn't have done mm. so it's kind of a, a look into North Korea's art and design and up until you know we've got um, digital graphic design mm -hmm. now for posters and bits and bobs like that but that's only, that's very new in North Korea so there are just it's just amazingly illustrated things and ticket stubs and just all sorts of Look at that. amazing Wonderful. art that's come out of North Korea. And he just found it because the main city, oh gosh, I've forgotten what the main city is called. It's not Pyongyang. Pyongyang. Yes. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So he said it's just been built in such a measured way because they wanted it to be this socialist city and mm. all that kind of thing. And it's just perfect and beautiful and surprising you know th when you think north korea most people have this chill of dread don't yes. they but you know there's a lot more to it than that well that page that you flicked to looked very socialist in this design didn't it, it yeah. looked sort of come out of um, stalin's russia well they're taught that you love your country and, mm. and this you know this is um this is how everything is but look at the underground there the wow yeah look at that. cards from a souvenir set of pyongyang metro postcards and it just looks looks like a little utopia doesn't it it does it looks but like obviously that's only part of the story it looks like something so. out of the avengers <laughs> <laughs> <Does it? laughs> yes. anyway four more great books available at wardini stores in havelock north and in napier and you've got a website yes yeah wardini.co.nz and you've got a facebook page yep and as always, our pleasure to talk with you. Before we let you get back to work, if we want any of these great books, we can come and see you, of course, but we can ring you as well and talk about it. Yeah, What's the phone number yeah, again? 877 uh, in Havelock, 6512632 in Napier. As always, our pleasure. You look after yourself. Till the next time. Cool. Thanks, Kim.